Well, hello there. Hey, this week's tip is especially for moms who are homeschooling multiple kids. Is that you? All right, you're gonna wanna stick around. So one of the things that used to happen to me is that I would set things up in a way that I thought was like spot on, right? I made sure that one child had this so that I could work independently with this other one. Inevitably, right, Adam would uh, be working on one thing, I'd be concentrating with Derek, and all of a sudden what I thought was gonna take Adam a half hour, he was done in 10 minutes and he's coming up. Hey mom, I'm done, can I go play video games? Hey mom, I'm done, can I go watch TV? Hey mom, like, oh my gosh, stop, what, what do you mean you're done already? You're done already? And it felt chaotic and it would completely ruin the momentum that Derek and I had going, Ugh, it was horrible. I didn't do this many times, let me tell you, because I, keyed right into what I would have done in a classroom situation. So if this is something that you've struggled with, I'm gonna give you a great tip this week. It's going to eliminate the problem. Sound good? We need to eliminate problems. All right, so this is called the Smart Time Sheet. And just so you know, this week I have it for you as a freebie. You can find it down below in the description box. There'll be a link there. Click on that and it'll take you. Um, of course, you can always just create your own. Once you see what mine looks like, you'll totally have the idea. Uh, by the way, did I even introduce myself? I'm Melissa Webb. I'm a credentialed teacher, also a former homeschooling mom. So I use my experience to help you, the next generation of homeschool moms. If this is something that you're thinking, mm, I wanna know what her next video is gonna be, be sure to subscribe. Uh, but for right now, how about we go take a look at the Smart Time Sheet and I'm gonna explain to you exactly how this works. It's gonna make your day. All right, so I want to just share an idea that may inspire some of you who struggle from time to time trying to figure out how to help one child while you have multiple children, one or more, that are saying they don't know what to do. We are one person and we're trying to help many children often in our homeschooling experience. And this was something that we had used that helped uh, with that particular issue. And that was uh, when we started the year, we sat down and brainstormed together all the different things that we could be doing independently. Now, what's really important about doing this before you get to that moment when your child says, I don't know what you want me to do, is that by doing it ahead of time, you're getting in front of a potential problem, thus completely erasing the problem from even happening in the first place. So we came up with a list and some of the ideas were mine and um, some of them were the boys. And so together we just made this list. So things that I said that they could do and we all agreed on uh, included some of these that you see right here. So free choice reading. So that didn't have to be a book I chose. It could be a comic book or a motorcycle magazine or a book that they were reading for fun. Free choice writing, that could just be a journal where they could write whatever they wanted to or create a game, a word game, a puzzle, word puzzle in their journal, something like that. Any kind of an art project. So we had a station or area where we had these boxes, which actually goes to the second one too, this brain boxes. And in these boxes, we had various things. And I would pick things up whenever we would hit the dollar store um, or if Michael's or Hobby Lobby were having you know, some great giveaways or the Target $1 area. I would just pick things up and keep them in our boxes. And we had one art box that had clay, it had markers and paints. And these are things, and this is really important, for us we had a school room. So all of these things were only to be used during school hours. So there's another thought. We had school hours. And so even though my children would love to play video games all day long, during school hours, they could not. They could do any of these things if they had free time or I was busy helping someone else or doing whatever I was doing. 
but during school hours, it had to come off of this list. So these boxes were great. We had one full of art activities. Brain boxes were really great too. Like we would pick up, there was a time I remember when Derek just loved locks. And so we were buying all kinds of different locks, door locks, regular um, locks with keys. And then we had other boxes that had small hammers and nails and screws. Um, we had a magnet box. So brain boxes were grab a box and just you could sit and play with that, create something. We also had some some books, um, like consumable books that the boys enjoyed writing in, but I didn't necessarily assign day-to-day -day, um, assignments from it, but that would be handwriting or cursive. There was a time when they really loved to practice that so they could go do as many pages as they wanted. And Explode the Code, do you use this? It was a great book that helped practice some phonetic skills and some simple grammar things. And it again, it was just very easy to do independently. Um, online, there were a lot of things. So Typing Pal, Raz Kids, which was reading A to Z. Discovery Education, Spelling City, Learning Games for Kids, No Red Ink, IXL. These are the ones that during our time homeschooling, we use these a lot. And some of these are still around today. I'll actually show you a few of them. And then we always had a couple things that they could do outside in an area where I was fine with them being close to the house. So we had a big driveway where obviously they could scooter and we had a, a wall on the side of the garage where they could hit the ball and, and play wall ball, uh, which again, these are just things that could be independent if they just like they needed to get outside and get some fresh air. All of these things worked really well. Um, some of these sites that I just mentioned, I want to point out to you. So Raz Kids, you can do a free trial to start with. We were with a school that offered this as an option. It's a leveled reading. So this is um, computerized reading programs. And I like them for a lot of reasons. One, they can be very self-motivating for children, especially if your child likes to earn points and win prizes. Uh, the other thing I love is it can be very independent. Once you know what level your child is reading, then you can just go into those leveled reading um, assignments. The books are fun and colorful. They're simple. What I don't I like is that I think some families think this is all they need for reading practice. And, and I would say that's very limiting because a lot of kids get into the reading just for the points and they're not really reading for the sake of loving to read. So keep plenty of books around and, and read, you know, the real actual hardcover, soft cover, right? All that sort of thing on Kindles, whatever. Raz Kid had its place, but it wasn't the only reading that we did. We loved this site. Have you seen this? Learning Games for Kids. There's all these things. There's animal uh, games, songs and videos, health games, it's all free. Math games are on here, vocabulary. There's really, this did a lot. But I wanted to show you one of our favorite things and that was this US state games where we could click on this and you could do all kinds of things depending on what you were practicing. We used to love to map the 50 states. Well, actually it'll give you a map and this is an interactive activity that we would do even as a family sometimes. And the kiddos can, you know, come right up here and start uh, picking a state and then coming on over and dragging it and dropping it where it goes. Or you could actually be like, oh, well, I know Washington is up here and you go find Washington and you put it up there. Right. You could do either way, but it keeps a time and we'll do a score and you can drag and drop all the way across. It's really fun. Um, IXL is fantastic too. IXL offers math and language arts. They also offer like a free month, but I think it's a paid subscription at up to some point. Um, we usually use it for math and language arts, but as you could see, you could go here to third grade and take a look at all the different skills. This is just math all the different skills that they practice. And what's great is these are all grade level standard. So they're very appropriate for what your child should know. And they'll give you examples uh, what that would look like. 
So you can just look on any one of these. If nothing else, this is just great to see what should my third grader be able to do by the end of third grade. Keep in mind, everything you see on here is what they have to master by the end of third grade. So this was a really fun one. We like Typing Pal 2. Uh, Typing Pal looks just like this, and they help you practice your keyboarding skills. Um, I think they do have a free version. I know they have a paid version as well. But always check if you're with a school, they may have a subscription already. So it's always good to ask. Another one that we loved, uh, Spelling City, which I think now may be called Vocabulary Spelling City. I'm not sure. It's still at SpellingCity.com. Um, if you need any of these, you know you can always reach out to me. But we love Spelling City too. So they would have their words for the week and I would create a list. And then there would be all kinds of games and things that they could play to practice that. So there were pra uh, spelling ways they could practice, game ways, phonics practice. It was really fun, really fun. So those are just some of the things that we would do. Um, and like I said, it's so important to have this list prepared before your child ever says, I don't know what you want me to do. You're going to avoid so many headaches and heartaches if you have this list up ahead of time. We would always put it in a, a plastic sleeve and just keep it in um, our school room. And so again, if for any reason grandma called and I needed to take that call, my kiddos would know like, oh, I'm going to go do something that's with smart time. And they would just pick off of the list and have some fun while I knew that they were doing something of educational value. So uh, there's an idea for you. And I would love to hear some of the some of the ideas that you might want to and be willing to share. All right, so there you have it. Are you inspired, right? This is a simple thing to do, and to do it as a family can be really fun. So I'm challenging you to come up with your own smart time list. I also want to make sure to encourage you to set the boundary of school hours, whatever you choose those to be. For us, it was typically 9 to 2. If you make sure that you stick to your guns and make sure that those boundaries are academically based, it just takes a lot of the whining out of your day because you just say, these are the academic school hours, honey. You need to do something on the smart time list. You can do whatever you like on the smart time list. It just makes it work really smoothly. So that'd be my other suggestion. And hey, if you want to make sure that you hear all the tips and tricks that I have to offer, subscribe. Make sure you subscribe. I do have a question, by the way, and I would love it if you would take a minute and comment below what, if you've been teaching multiples, has worked for you. Please share with us what tips or tricks work in your home. We learn best from being in a community. So I hope you'll consider taking just a minute. I know everybody's busy, but I'd love for you to take just a minute and tell us what is something that works really well for your family. All right, my friends, if you have any other questions or have um, any other writing needs, you know you can find me over at writeonweb.com. And until I see you next time, write on.